Hi, my name is Betty and I'm here with Jeremy Thick and you're going to talk about reporting APIs. So Jeremy, um, what are reporting APIs? So the reporting APIs on the Microsoft Graph are basically a way for developers and analysts to be able to get at the same data that we show inside of the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Mm -hmm. So in the Admin Center, there's this whole reporting section where you can get to usage reports. And so I can see lots of information that we show in pre-canned charts mm -hmm. that you can grab the raw data of and build your own charts. Okay. Ours are very generic because we have to cater for every single customer that uses Microsoft 365. Yeah. And so, but we want to give you that flexibility through these APIs to get at that data mm -hmm. to show you the charts in exactly the way you want to present it to your adoption team or maybe executives within your organization. Okay. And what can you do with these APIs? Yeah, good question. Yeah. So um, I think the most exciting ones that we see is things like when users are using Outlook, mm -hmm. what types of ways are they accessing their mail? So yeah. are they using it on their Windows machine or a Mac, Android or Outlook? Are they using it in the browser? Mm -hmm. Having the ability to get at that information and report on it is super interesting for adoption teams to see where their heat of uh, usage is across the organization. Okay. But then in addition to that, we can start to see things like who's using OneDrive the most mm -hmm. and how often are they accessing it and what kind of activity they're doing. Mm -hmm. That gives adoption teams the ability to maybe even trigger automated tasks to go create inside of Planner that says the adoption team needs to go speak to Jeremy mm -hmm. because Jeremy's a one of the power users of OneDrive and interview Jeremy on what makes him successful uh, in his day-to-day -day life with OneDrive that they could then maybe capture that and package it as a story to then take to the rest of the organization to get them to be as big a power user of OneDrive as well. Okay. So there's lots of ways that you can use the APIs to automate how you do your adoption journey, but there's lots of other things that data can be used for as well. Okay, that's very interesting. So now can you show us? Yeah, totally. So you can see here I'm inside of the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and I'm looking at the usage reports under our reporting section. And you know, we show data in here, as we mentioned in pre-cam reports, where we can see things like the active usage, and active users, and we can even drill down into individual products like OneDrive and start to see that usage in you know over 7, 30, 90, 180 days. But you can't change these reports too much other than filters. Um, you can in the UI get at the, the raw data and export that as CSVs and Excel files, but it doesn't really work for an automation perspective you want them to do this every 30 days. You want to just get to the API that calls that data. And so if I scroll over to Graph Explorer here, I have a few pre-canned um, in my sample inside of, in my history here in Graph Explorer. And the first one I'm going to show is just essentially this get SharePoint activity pages. Now I'm logged in as a user that has access to these particular reports. Not every end user is going to have access to this level of data. And you can change the, the periods here that it's going to return to. Um, but you can also decide whether you want this to be returned in JSON, which I'm doing for this example because I'm inside a Graph Explorer, or as a CSV file that might be more familiar for people that are working with kind of reporting type products that um, support that natively. Um, sometimes they don't support JSON. And you'll see here that what this is actually returning is for each t uh, period of time, sorry, that's a refresh date, but each period of the reporting date, so you can see here the 8th of June, the, um, the 9th of June, the 7th of June, how many pages were visited across all of the SharePoint's pages in, the, in this environment. Now in your production environment, these numbers will be a lot higher but in this demo environment, this is just kind of showing you what kind of data you can get out at that extremely high level. So this is something that's like broad wise, not very specific on an individual. But if I go to the get OneDrive uh, activity user detail, same thing, we've got this period here and we can pick what format we want that to come back in. And if I scroll down here to the results, we'll actually get back a series of results based on individual users. And this is where you would do things like understand, okay, well, this user is actually not very particularly using things in, in OneDrive that much. They're not syncing any files. Uh, well, they're syncing too, but they're not sharing any files either internally or externally to the organization. And they've not viewed or edited files. Now, this is a demo environment. So this is a little bit harder, but if I scroll down here, you'll see that there are some examples where someone has shared five files and they've viewed and edited 17. Um, they've synced three files from those changes. And you can even get down to things like the patterns of what types of products they're assigned to SKU-wise, and maybe that has some kind of mapping as well. So you can see all this data across the different user segments that you have inside your organization and learn from the licenses and SKUs that they've been applied to them. So this is one great way of getting it from the API. 
In addition to that, there's another split. If I go to get email app usage here and just have a look at this one, again, we've got that period and we're seeing the formatting here. And if you look at this report, what this is showing is for email on a daily basis, so for the, the reporting date of the 3rd of June, how many people have used Outlook for web? How many using other mobile devices? Um, sorry, other Outlook client mobile devices? How many are accessing through Windows? How many are accessing through um, Outlook for Mac and other mail for Mac apps? And so you can see this reporting thing to see maybe you have an initiative internally that you want to move everyone onto the Outlook products and not the standard mail clients from operating systems. So again, you can get this data directly from the graph. And in addition to that, just one last one, just to show you with some team side here. If I just launch this particular one, same kind of pattern, get teams user activity. And if you scroll here, this is actually gonna show me for this particular user, um, what they've been doing as well. So when were they last active inside of Teams? Um, what assigned products they were? And then how many chat messages they've had in total uh, in channels, how many private messages have they had with one-on-ones or one-to-many outside of Teams channels, and even down to how many meetings they've joined and the call count. So really useful information that you can do all sorts of things with from an adoption perspective and a usage analysis perspective, all there simply just by calling this directly on the graph with an account that has access to that. So I'd really encourage you to go check these things out inside of Graph Explorer and have a look at our um, documentation. Um, and then you can build beautiful things like this in Power BI based on that raw data that is tailored to the way that you want to track usage and adoption within your own Microsoft 365 tenant. And so this is how you can get that data inside the Microsoft Graph. Okay, that is really interesting. So thank you so much for your time, Jeremy. You're welcome. If you want to learn more about this, go to graph.microsoft.com.